Hello again, working with the law of signs here, and I've got my law of signs up here, where the capital letter stands for the angle and the lowercase letter stands for the side. Lowercase letter stands for the side, pardon me. So I've got this example where I've got the angle of A equals 118 degrees, and its corresponding sign equals 20, and B equals 17. And this is different, because this time instead of being given two angles, I'm given one angle and two sides. And that angle is opposite one of the sides. It has to be in order to use the law of signs. And I give this problem to students, uh, there's a little bit of speculation that students have to understand, uh, I'll get to that in just a second, but you know, students look at this and say, I can't do this, it, it's over, you know, this is too difficult for me. And I say, why is it too difficult? And I say, well, you know, because if you don't draw a picture, it doesn't make sense. And I say, exactly, if you don't draw a picture, it doesn't make sense. You know, I don't have to, but it, it, it does help when you do draw a picture. So that's what you do, you draw a picture. And you try to make it at least comparable to what you're actually working with. And what you have here is you have an obtuse angle, an angle bigger than 90 degrees, so you better show that in your drawing. So I got a drawing. Now, there's no way this is going to be perfect, because one, I didn't figure out everything, and I don't know if it's going to be perfect, but I'm going to say, okay, that looks like it's about 118 degrees. Uh, we'll call that 20. It's opposite side. Uh, which one's B and which one's C? I say, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. You can call this one B or you can call this one B. It, it doesn't matter because you're not giving it. But if I'm going to choose, I'm just going to say, okay, let's make this B, which means this is C. doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, B is 17. And C, I don't know. And I basically need to solve for everything. I need to solve for my B and my C. And I need to solve, uh, sorry, angle B and angle C. And then I need to solve for my side C. So i got to do that. Now there's a stipulation that you have to understand when you're working with an obtuse angle and you're working with the law of sides. And here it is. Your obtuse angle is 118 degrees. That means that the side that's opposite that has to be the biggest. You know, your corresponding side. Bam! This has to be the biggest. C better not be 20 and it better not be anything bigger than 20. B better not be 20 or anything bigger. Every side has to be less than side A. It can't be equal to either. It has to be less than. And uh, you know, a student will ask, well, why is that the case? And I say, well, it's actually pretty simple, but I'll go ahead and explain it. So this is equal to 20 right here. If this were equal to 20 here, the triangle would never connect. It would never possibly connect. You know, you've got to connect this 20 with something else. Therefore, this side has to be less than. Therefore, this side has to be less than. Because if it's the same length as 20, what happens is this goes here, you try to stretch it out, it'll never reach you know, angle C. It just never does. So that's one thing you have to watch out for. If I look at this, and then all of a sudden, let's say this is a, this is a 16, and that's 118 degrees, and that's a 17, bam, problem's over. Can't solve it, no solution. But if this is the biggest side that goes with the biggest angle, you have a chance of solving it. Well, you will solve it. I mean, it's as simple as that. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So I'm looking at this problem, and I say, okay, I need to figure out B and C. And I need to figure out angles B and C, and I need to figure out side C. Well, which one of the three ratios can I use for sure? And the answer is I can use this one, the first one, sine of A over A. And the reason is, is because I'm given its angle and its side. Okay. Equals, and then i got to use one of these two ratios, or one of those two fractions. I can't use C because I'm either given its angle nor its side. But I haven't given B's side, so that's what I'm going to do. How do I solve for B in this particular case, or sine of B? I've got to cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, and by the way, I can cross multiply because it's two fractions that are equal to each other. Simple algebra right there. And what I get is I get, um, it doesn't matter, you can put sine of 118 times 17, or 17 times sine of 118 first. I'm going to go ahead and put sine of 118 degrees times 17 equals sine of B times 20. I'm a little lazy here and I'm also running out of room, so I've got to kind of caution myself on what i got to do here. How do I get the sine of B by itself? I divide 20 on both sides. If I divide 20, that side cancels with the 20, and I put it over 20 there. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to divide both sides by 20, but then I need the room, so I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm going to say, ah, oh, sine of b equals whatever this is divided by 20. 
when I do that, and for shame, I can't actually do that in my head. I know that the sine of 118 is positive, and I know that it's got to be more than 0.866, but other than that, I really don't know. Well, I hope it's more than 0.8. Hey, sine of 118, let's try it out. Now, this is a little emasculating when I do this uh, process, and this is where I say to my students, get out your calculator, let's do what we're supposed to do, and then everybody takes it out and tries to erase me here. And that's actually like 0.882 something. And I got to multiply by 17. I'm not going to even round or do anything like that. I just want to go ahead and I want to put everything in. That comes out to 15 when I multiply 17 and then I divide by 20 at the end. And I get 0.75. And that's how I'm going to leave it. 0.7505. I'm just going to round it to 0.75. Equals sine of B. I didn't actually figure out the angle yet though. What I have to do is get rid of this sign, and then I'll get the B by itself, the capital B. Well, the way of doing that is by taking its inverse sign on both sides. Now, the inverse and that function leave the B by itself, but what I do on one side of an equation, I better do on the other. And this is how you plug it into, you know, some calculators. I don't know if all calculators are the same, but you do. Uh, second sign, which should give you sine negative 1, that means inverse sine. It doesn't mean the reciprocal. It doesn't mean the reciprocal. It means the inverse. Inverse sine of 0.75. So when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put in second sine of 0.75, and I get about 48.59. I'm just going to round that to 49 degrees. When I work with degrees, I like rounding to the nearest degree. That's my preference. Some teachers like rounding to the nearest tenth, that's perfectly fine too. The reason why I like rounding to the nearest degree, I'll go ahead and say it right now, is because I'm just very lazy. That's, that's really it. B equals 49 degrees. It's not, you know, mathematically better. It certainly isn't mathematically better. It's, you know, actually better not to round it to the nearest degree. But I like doing that. It should go in there. Because I don't want to sit there and try to figure out what C is. I'm saying, okay, that's up to 180 degrees. 118 plus 49 is... 28, 38, 48, 58, 68, 67, that makes sense. So C has to be about 13 degrees. Well, that's a little cluttered to say the least. So now I figured out all my angles. A is 118, B is 49, C is 13 degrees. A is 20, B is 17, but I didn't actually figure out my side C yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all this because I don't need it anymore, and I'm going to go ahead and figure out my sine C. And while I'm doing that, you can go ahead and go ahead of me if you'd like to, if you're confident enough. Or you can check to make sure that I did this right. I hope I did. 120 plus 50 is 170. Uh, subtract 3 is 67. Yeah, so it comes out to 13. Woo! Okay. So I want to figure out sine C. I know everything else except for side C. Well, let's use what we already know. I didn't round this. I mean, I'm sorry, I rounded this, so I don't want to use this one. Let's just stay consistent and use sine of A over A. So sine of A is 118 degrees over my corresponding side is 20, or side opposite being, or whatever you want to say, equals. And then i got to figure out my C value, so I'm going to use this one. And I'm already given one of the two, so sine of 13 degrees. It's not exactly 13 degrees, but it's an approximation. And it's a pretty good one. What I do to figure out my C in this case is I cross multiply. So go ahead and do that. I'm a little lazy when it comes to this, so I'm going to just show you what I would do. I do 20 times sine of 13 degrees equals C times sine of 118, but I know I have to divide by sine of 118. And then what I would do when I go ahead and I plug this into my calculator is I'd actually do sine of 13 degrees times, and figure out that what, what that is, then multiply by 20, and then divide by, and I'd do parentheses first, sine of 118, close parentheses. So that's what I would do personally. Like I said, this is the most emasculating part because I have to sit there and try to figure out what this is, as opposed to knowing it off the top of my head. I guess it doesn't really make me feel bad, but I'd like to know what the sine of 118 is. Well, sine of 118, pardon, that's not right. Sine of 118, uh, with all this, is off the top of my head. Unfortunately, I don't know that. But I got 5.09. I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth, which is 5.1.
When I work with sides, I like rounding them to the nearest tenth. This is an approximation. When I work with angles, I like rounding to the nearest degree. Uh, so side C is 5.1, about. Everything in black is an approximation. It's not perfect. But, you know, it's the best I could do on such short notice. And actually, you have to check to make sure it makes sense. Biggest angle should be biggest side. Second biggest angle, second biggest side. All right? It's not really much of a drop off. Third biggest angle, third biggest side. So with that said, I hope that's helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.